So today we're working on a mini split that one of our customers put in. He wanted us to come and vacuum it out and charge the system. Uh, this particular system, uh, reading through the instruction manual on how to vac it down and stuff, um, if you want to you can carefully read through uh, all the instructions there, but I'm just going to briefly go over what it is saying. So you hook up your vacuum pump to your gauges, leave your high side closed, and then run your low side one over to the adapter on the port there. So we are currently sucking all the air out of the line set. And then uh, they recommend pulling a vacuum for 15 minutes or until it gets down to 30 inches, which you can see we are all the way down. So it's been running for about 25. I think 15 minutes is a little short. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and close this off now. And then they recommend, of course you can then shut your vacuum pump off. They then recommend waiting for uh, five minutes and then rechecking to make sure that the pressure gauge hasn't come up. And then if there's no uh, loss, then you can open up the valve until the pressure comes up above zero. And then they recommend waiting again uh, to make sure that the refrigerant level doesn't drop. They just say a few minutes, so like five minutes again. And that is a good idea. So if there is some big leak somewhere, you know that it's uh, taken care of. Now this system also calls for extra refrigerant being added depending on the line set length. So it is factory charged to do up to 16 feet and then the additional refrigerant to be charged can be cal calculating using the following formula. This is necessary only if the length exceeds 25 feet. Now it's kind of interesting because they're saying there's enough refrigerant for 16 feet but then they're saying that uh, if it's longer than 25, you have to add extra. So it sounds like they actually mean between 16 and 25 feet, you don't have to do anything, but anything longer than that, you're gonna have to add some refrigerant. Um, this particular installation has the line set running down into the ground, goes across and then up into the ceiling of that building to the evaporator. So it's, I think he said 50 feet. I'm gonna double check with them before we do the calculation. But you look at their uh, list here that show uh, how much refrigerant to add. So if the line set is quarter um, and three eighths or half inch, which in this case it is, the small line is quarter and the bigger line is half inch, then you add an additional 0.16 ounce per foot um, past the 16 feet. So We'll take our 16 off of our 50 feet, or however long the line set is. I gotta double check with him. Um, and then we'll add 1 6 ounce. If our line set was the bigger style of 3 8 um, or 5 8 or 3 quarter, then we would add 0 0.32 ounces. So we're gonna go double check with him on the length uh, in order to calculate exactly how much refrigerant we have to add in and then um, I'll show you how to actually add that extra refrigerant into the system. Okay, so I just double checked with him. He said he did use a 50 foot line set. So if we take our 50 feet and subtract our uh, 16 feet from that, that gives us 34 feet additional that we need to account for. And our 34 times our 0.16, since we're in the uh, quarter or 3 eighths or half category, uh, gives us 5.44 ounces to be added to account for the line set. So I just wrote that in the book that way he can reference it if he ever needs to uh, Do something with this system. They know that it's going to be that 5.44 ounces over the factory charge. So <clears throat> um, We'll go ahead and proceed with that. It's been about five minutes, so we should be good on the uh, vacuum there You can see holding nicely So at this point Make sure that's closed off. We're going to go ahead and open this. Until our pressure comes up above zero. We'll go to 25 PSI. Right there. So I'm going to go and double check all the fittings. I have a digital leak detector. Um, so now there's actual refrigerant in the line. Um, I should be able to double check all these fittings. <clears throat> you can see he had to add a little extension there. Um, when I soaked them all down initially, I didn't find any leaks, but I always like to do it twice just to make I'm, make sure I'm, you know, for sure good. 
So I'm going to go do that quick and then I'll come back and we'll uh, add in the refrigerant. So here's that indoor part portion. So we'll just double check it here. Kind of cool design, I haven't really seen this style before. You can see it pushes the cold air out like a camper and then sucks it back right here. So I got my tank of refrigerant hooked up. We're gonna back bleed a little bit of refrigerant to purge the air out of this yellow hose. Just like that, we can tighten that up. So we've gotten the air out of it. Air is a non-condensable gas and we don't want that in our system. Close that off, now we can open up the liquid port on here and flip it onto the scale and get it zeroed. So go ahead and tear that out. And the system is not running currently, but since we haven't let all the refrigerant go, I think we probably can add our full 5.44 ounces, but we'll see. If you've already let the refrigerant go, then you need to start the system up so that the low side pressure goes down, which will allow you to add refrigerant. But we'll just see, let's see if we can get it. We'll go with five and a half, right there. And then I'll add in the additional that's in the hose, so it'll be just a little bit extra. And we're gonna start the system up and make sure that it's running in an acceptable range. So I'm gonna go turn everything on and see how it looks. All right, so the unit just came on and cooling, and you can see the refrigerant has surged to below the freezing point at first here, but I'm guessing that's gonna come up and hang around 40. Um, I think a lot of these units try to vary the compressor speed in order to get that pressure to be right around 40 degrees. And I do feel a little bit of heat being rejected. It is also a pretty cool day. Like the outdoor temp right now is like in the 60s, so normally you wouldn't be running your air conditioning when the outdoor temp is this low. But So it's a few minutes later and now you can see we're running 35 degrees for the vapor saturation temperature which is good. You don't want to see that number super low. If it's down in here, then that means it's running the coil too cold. But yeah, it looks like it's not going to be a problem. So make sure that the remainder of our charge is added in. Cap the lines and we're good to go. I'll try to link in the description to some of the stuff that you're going to need, like this uh, port adapter. Um, obviously you're going to need like refrigeration gauges and vacuum pump if you're doing a line set that's flared like this. Um, also an eccentric flaring tool is really good to have. You're going to want to look at the uh, instruction manual for whatever unit you're doing. It does vary unit to unit uh, as for how much refrigerant you actually have to add. Uh, if yours calls for more, do more, less, less, but usually it's something pretty similar to that. Uh, anyway, hope that you enjoyed and I'll talk to you later.